You all can see my screen, right? Yes. And just a minute. I think I have to share sound also. So let me share sound too. Please. Namaste, everybody. We have been doing these presentations for a while. And we have come to two major milestones today. Number one, this is our 105th presentation on this Zoom for the past two and a half years. And the second milestone is that so far, either me or other invited speakers are telling you that food is medicine, please use it well. And many, many different people have said how to eat well, when to eat, what to eat, all those things were covered. Now, this situation has come to a stage where physicians are going to prescribe what you should eat to have better health. This is a very remarkable development, though as Indians, when people who have knowledge of Ayurveda know all this along, they know this, but now the entire Western medicine or modern medicine is coming to the understanding of food is medicine. Not only the understanding, they will start prescribing food as medicine. Therefore, today's topic is food prescription AI. This is possible because vast amount of data can be handled very well, effectively by artificial intelligence and therefore you will get appropriate suggestions. We have plenty of food. We talked all about it many, many different ways. But now it will be on your plate prescribed by physicians. This certainly is the right direction to have better health. Why? Because there are 1.74 million species on earth. Only we humans use medicines, hospitals, surgeries, but not other species. Yet the other species live a healthy life. We don't see sick animals around. People can argue that if they become sick, they will die. That's not really true. If you observe nature, many, many animals, when they are sick, they know exactly what to eat, how to eat, and when to eat to be healthy. Humans have to relearn those abilities and that is going to create a new wave of prescription of food. Some of you may have seen this information already. After reviewing 11 million deaths across the world, Scientists have determined that dietary risk is on the top. No matter what kind of disease you may get, the root cause lies in the food. And therefore, food must be taken seriously. With South Asians, 
the main problem in our food is eating too much starch. If we do not eat that much starch, as shown here, which is 125% compared to all other food groups, there are 11 food groups that humans are consuming red meat, starchy vegetables, eggs, poultry, dairy foods, fish, vegetables, fruit, legumes, whole grains, and nuts. Except starchy vegetables, rice and wheat, we are not consuming the remaining 10 different groups of food items at the level that they should be consumed. The right level to consume them is 100% circle line, but none of them are close. Therefore, that is causing the imbalance. The heavy starch diet is causing the imbalance in the body and that is the root cause for diseases and problems. Knowing these things, governments, doctors, public health officials, they start giving different dietary recommendations. Common public say that one day they say that eat this, another day they say don't eat this. They are confused. Most of you also will have the same situation. Take the simple example of coffee or tea. Sometimes they publish coffee is great. Sometimes they said coffee is not great. But unfortunately, the people who translate, transmit this information are making this information very complex and not useful. Otherwise, there is no confusion because the dietary recommendations are given at three different levels. One is at the population level, where what the country should, as a country, should be consuming, depending on the location, age groups. Whereas the second one is group level. Which population, what age group should consume what kind of foods? What type of people should consume what type of food? For example, those who do hard work must have very high calorie food. Those who do not do hard work should not have, need not have high calorie diet. And finally, the level of recommendation should be focused to the individual. Each individual is different in their abilities to eat, digest, and utilize the energy. So if we understand the three different levels of recommendations given by the scientists, doctors, and the governments, then probably it will all make sense. In the modern times, with the artificial intelligence, all these things will be streamlined and the correct, appropriate dietary recommendation for population level, group level, person level will be made easy for you all. We have said earlier that the whole understanding of our health depends on understanding the human body. Human body is a molecular factory. Human body is a million molecule molecular factory. This factory's job is to take food, water, and oxygen from air and produce energy. This is the main job of human body, a molecular factory, other than producing children to maintain the progeny. In this factory of the hundred of reactions, hundreds of thousands of reactions, 
that take place are done through various molecules. And these molecular changes result in our growth and up to 40, enormous potential goes up and they become peak performance of all these molecular reactions. And after 40, it starts coming down the hill. If you don't do anything and you neglect or not care that much, it will have various stages of life after 40 and from 60 onwards, it will be even further drastically coming down, probably between 60 and 85 persons become sick, disabled and bedridden and eventually die. Whereas with the modern medicine, we have the ability to prevent many of these conditions. When we apply those preventive measures, the life and the life health span can be increased by another 20 years. Lifespan is the number of years that you live. Health span is the number of years that you live in a healthy way. If someone is living up to 100, but the health from 60 onwards is bad, living 40 years without good health is no good. That is the reason why we have to have the preventive measures so that when someone is living longer, their health also will be for a long period of time. But from now on, with the revolution in the IT industry, artificial intelligence, and the scientific research, we have many different ways to not only prevent, but intervene and correct the mistakes that are happening in the body and thereby these interventions can extend your life up to 120. Last year, I made a full presentation of why, how people can live up to 120 years without any doubt if we follow certain precautions, preventions and interventions. All these things are possible because we are understanding the human molecular factory at molecular level. Let's see the molecules or the nuts and bolts of this factory. Genome, genes, 20,000. Proteins, 620,000. And all these metabolites, a million of them. 225,000 of these metabolites are already known. Thousands and thousands of proteome proteins are already known and almost all the genes are known and therefore we are very confident that we can achieve that kind of intervention to make life a longer healthy one. Now starting from the food, what should be eaten? There are two major categories of food that we have, vegetarian and non-vegetarian. The debate always is whether vegetarian food is good, healthy or non-vegetarian food is good and healthy. The debate can be settled very easily if we see what is this human body made for. Human body is made for digesting the food that should be giving the health and let us see which part of the body does this main function of digesting the food. That's the gut. So now check the gut length with the animal height and all these carnivore or meat eating animals have very short gut length, meaning their gut length is three to six times of their height. Whereas the herbivores on this side, zebra and all the monkeys, apes, families, Renos, their gut length is 10 to 12 times more than their height. Man's gut length is 10 to 11 times, which is very close to herbivores. Therefore, 
humans are able to consume meat as well as vegetables and easily function well. With this information, one can decide whether they want to be eating non-vegetarian or vegetarian or eat both omnivores. They are called omnivores. But whatever you eat, there are so many precautions that are required. If you follow, neither will not harm your health. Now coming to the food, plant-based edible foods. The food itself has six major components. Carbohydrates, proteins, fats, minerals, antioxidants, and vitamins. People have, scientists have understood these also in addition to the human body. And therefore, we know how to apply these food items for better health. There's another component that we have to understand to have specific food that can give you health. In our gut, we have 100 trillion cells. These are microbes, very small, cannot be seen with the naked eye. They are in your stomach and they are the main reason how your food is digested or any other gut problems. They are the main reason for the entire human health balance. In comparison with the 100 trillion cells of microbes, human body has 28 to 36 trillion cells. So number wise, these microbes in your gut are much more, three to four, four times more than your total cells. So understanding the molecules, understanding the food, understanding the microbiome is definitely helping us to make specific recommendations to the people for normal health as well as in the situation of disease. If you re really take food in the right way, the chances are very high that you will not go into disease state. However, once you go into a disease state, for one reason or the other, definitely the modern medicine will help. Food prescription AI or food prescription using AI surely will help you to maintain very good health. But when you are sick, you need the other help with the advanced sciences that are available to us right now. To show the importance of food, there was a big experiment that was done in 2003, 2023. And this experiment was presented in Sweden at a meeting called Precision Nutrition Meeting. Last September, I attended this meeting in that meeting, Dr. Oli Maliander from Lund University and Salvatro di Somma from Cilanto in Rome, Italy, both presented an experiment details. The experiment is they have taken 60 adults from Lund University area, Sweden, for 14 days to live in Cilanto. Cilanto is a town in the Mediterranean region where the food is Mediterranean style. Other speakers have told you already that Mediterranean diet of all the 39 diets that are available to humans now, that's the healthiest one. So they have taken these people from Sweden whose diet is mainly butter, potatoes, beer and meat. Whereas the diet of the Mediterraneans in Italy, in Cilanto, is tomatoes, vegetables, olives, olive oil and wine. 
These are the predominant groups of food items in cilantro diet or Mediterranean diet. Of all the people that they have tried, one week to 14 days, they measured 108 blood parameters. Out of 108 blood parameters, 83 parameters within one week moved towards healthier state, including diabetes and such situations. Therefore, the experiment concludes that shift in your diet can improve your health very well. There is no doubt about it. Now, how many food items we have? Edible plants at one time or the other, according to Food and Agriculture Organization of United Nations, suggests that people have tasted, at least tried 37,000 plants on earth. But we have today in the Food Plants International Database 26,384 plants. That's a huge number. From that, plants for future have saved 7,417 plants as edible plants. Of them, my team has made a list of 4,000 plants, which are very high in potential to consume as foods by humans. From that 4,000 list, our working database is 1,098. I have presented the details of the working database several times to you. And this food, plant-based or animal, how much to eat? That's the first question many of you have. In the prescription, they may say, eat X type of food, but how much? And for that, there was an experiment done. This is a remarkable experiment in which they have taken unprocessed food, ultra processed food. Ultra processed food is, for example, a burger, which is highly processed, packed, ready to, give, ready to be given to you at an order in fast food places. Vast majority of the fast food items are ultra processed. They are ultra processed because they have to stay good for several months. Therefore, they have to be processed very heavily and all sorts of ingredients that are not naturally used by us at home have to be added so that they stay the same. This experiment, they have taken ultra processed diet of that type and they made unprocessed diet or minimally processed diet comparing them is the idea of the experiment. These diets were presented in random order to the people and matched for calories which means this ultra processed and this unprocessed have equal amount of calories, sugars, fat, fiber and micronutrients. There's no difference in the sugar calories, sugars, fat, fiber, and micronutrients between these two groups. And they were asked, people were asked to eat at liberty. There are no restriction. If a group is eating, if a person is eating ultra processed, they can eat as much as they want. If the process, a person is eating unprocessed, they also the person can eat as much as he or she wants. The first graph on the top shows that ultra processed diet group ate very high calories, approximately 3000 calories. Whereas even if everything is matched and everything is not restricted, the unprocessed diet eating people ate only 2500 
or so. This experiment is also done for two weeks. And in this, at the end of the second week, they measured every time they measured the week, a weight. At the end of the second week, you see the difference between the weight gained, body weight in kilos, by the or lost by the ultra processed diet people, group people, or unprocessed diet group people. The ultra processed group diet people gained weight, the blue line, whereas unprocessed diet group lost weight. The major lesson from this is if you eat unprocessed diet without any restriction of how much to eat, as much as you want, the unprocessed diet does not add weight to your body. Rather, it will reduce the weight and therefore eating unprocessed is very important for your health. So that's the first prescription. Eat unprocessed diet. Well, the question is, what is unprocessed and how do you decide what we get is whether unprocessed or ultra-processed. Certainly, no food item is just unprocessed that can be consumed easily. There is a need for some processing. For example, take an apple. If you eat an apple directly, unprocessed. You cannot eat an apple if you cannot eat an apple. You have to add something to it, cut it to pieces, do something, maybe peanut butter or any other item. And so is the case with various vegetables. You cannot eat all the vegetables. You can make them into, dip them and eat with a dip, things like that. That is minimally processed, still that is healthy. Whereas if the apple is made into a rice, uh, in, into a drink, juice, then that is between highly processed and minimally processed. And if the apple is made it into a food product that is highly processed, if the apple is made it into a gummy bear that is ultra processed. So please replace highly processed and ultra processed foods with whole or minimally processed foods for a healthier eating pattern that supports your health. An apple is a whole food compared to a gummy bear is an ultra processed food. You have so many food items. As you can see here, some of them. When you walk into a grocery store, into these aisles of food, Almost every one of them is an ultra-processed food item. They process it in such a level, to such a level, because they have to increase the shelf life and they have to make it attractive. They have to pack it and ship it with all those things. Vast majority of our food in the grocery stores is ultra-processed. The same food item, if you do some minimal processing and try to eat, take the peanuts, peanut butter. If people are malnourished, yes, peanut butter is a great product. But if you are not malnourished and you want to consume peanuts, consuming in the raw form is much healthier than in the peanut butter form. Therefore, the first prescription is to minimize your ultra-processed, avoid ultra-process, reduce whatever way, and at the same time, increase your minimally processed or unprocessed foods. Almost all the fruits you don't have to process. Most of the vegetables with very minimal processing cooking methods, they will be very good for you. 
Now, we had a full presentation. I myself gave this, went to eat. Again and again, the point is very straightforward. No matter what you eat, how much you eat, your health depends on when are you eating that. If you are eating within the eight hours period, it is healthiest. And the rest of the 24, 16 hours, if you don't eat, that is very good for your body. If not, 10 hours period from morning till evening, no more than 11 or 12 hours period. This will give you very good health. This is the second prescription. I'll give you a simple analogy to understand why is it going to help you without getting into science. From the time that you put your food in the mouth, saliva to all the way in various parts of the gut, different glands, different organs like liver will help your food to get digested. And that digested food is what is going to give you energy. And if it is done with a good balance, you are healthy. So all these organs, glands, imagine they are like music players in an orchestra. When you give food into your mouth, all these organ pl players, they have to start functioning, producing the enzymes, the juices that are needed for digesting properly. What if you constantly give food and no rest for digestive system? It is like a, a symphony without a good conductor making everybody playing their own instruments. It ends up as noise, cacophony, than symphony. Therefore, restrict your food as much as possible, solid foods, within 12 hour period. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. if possible, even before, and make it as close as to as close to eight hours of total period. If you can, that will be even better. The total period of four hours, 10 hours, eight hours is defined by various groups, morning eight to four o'clock in the afternoon. So when to eat is a very simple method for better health. Now there's another when to eat for each food item. You must have seen this before. I presented it earlier. Every food item from the time it is cut and becomes ripe or ready to eat. There are various stages. And the moment that you cut any fruit or vegetable, plenty of chemical reactions take place. These reactions, as you can see here, a banana with a slight greenish is underripe. It will have high resistant starch. It's a great source of probiotics for gut health and this is the right time for almost all the people to consume banana. The right color. If the banana's color is underripe color, slightish green but still yellow. The next stage of ripening is barely ripe. This is having high fiber and low sugars. This is a the right and good way if you are not requiring prebiotics. So both these underripe and barely ripe are very healthy. Then coming to the ripe, it will have less fiber, but still good content of fiber, but it also will have high antioxidant levels as the chemical reactions are taking place. So a ripe banana is healthy But barely ripe and underripe are much more beneficial for your body. Further, if you leave the banana, it will become very ripe. 
with spots, brownish spots. In that, what happens? Vitamin concentration, antioxidant concentration will come down. And the minerals that are healthy for you get blocked or locked into other chemical compounds where you cannot get them into the body. Therefore, it is not advisable to eat very ripe one. Further down, if you want to see fully dark or almost dark kind of banana is overripe, which will have very high sugar, very low fiber, and therefore it's not healthy at all. For every food item, there is such a stage wise healthy state of eating. In the future events or in the future presentations, we'll discuss in detail of some good food items that you normally consume. The other thing is to eat wide range of food items. It is very easy to say so, but I hear I'll give an example of pulses, beans, legumes. There are 40 different pulses. I have presented this slide also to you earlier, but reinforcing the idea that you should consume a wide range of food items instead of a narrow range, I want to suggest that have bean soup, whichever bean you like. Change one every day and make seven different bean soups and that will give you a very good health because it has higher protein, higher fiber, higher minerals, and various other colored compounds, which are antioxidants that are healthy for your body. If you want to buy these grains, or legumes, beans, they are really available in the grocery stores in and around in New York. Easily, you can buy up to 20 different types without any problem. If you spend a little bit more time, you will get even more. They're all available in New York and therefore, you will not have any excuse of the availability of these. Of them, of course, certainly you may like some. The taste-wise, each one of them is different and they have their own taste, but all of them are really valuable to your health. The next question comes very often, whether to eat this kind of plant proteins or animal proteins. Many, many people believe in the Western world that animal protein is very good over plant protein. The statement is true to a great extent, but there's no reason to worry about if you don't want to eat animal protein. Here is an experiment done by a Brazilian scientist group recently that showed that protein source does not affect resistant training among young men consuming adequate amount of protein. If you eat right amount of protein, it varies from 0.8 grams to 1 gram per kilogram of your body weight, which means if you are 60 kilos, 60 grams per day is good enough. But whether you take animal protein or plant protein, if you don't take that required 1 gram per kilogram of your body weight, then your health suffers. That is where the confusion happens. Therefore, eat the beans, legumes to meet your protein requirement very seriously. Then, even if you are a vegetarian or a vegan, it doesn't matter. Further to the protein, carbohydrate, fats, we have 
the requirement of various minerals and vitamins. Those minerals and vitamins come from berries, antioxidants. They all come from berries. Antioxidants, vitamins, minerals are found in these berries. We have 138 berries. I'm sure you must have seen in the grocery stores at least 10 to 15 different types of berries from time to time seasonally available in the New York area itself. If you go online, many berries are available in dried form, even they are healthy, even if they are dried. And they will provide good digestive health, brain health, heart health, bone health, eye health, liver health, skin health, and overall, they will give you a good anti-aging food that you can enjoy the taste and have the aging slowed down. Another major thing people often say that you do not get vitamin A from plant sources. This statement appears to be true outwardly because none of these plant products have vitamin A molecules. But the reality is all these food items which are colored have carotenoids and these carotenoids are processed by the body to make the vitamin A that is needed for the body. Other than these food items, ingredients, the most important thing is water. We had a full session on the water earlier, but I stress on that water point because human body is 70% or more of water, always, constantly, body needs water. Please provide water. You probably can survive without food, but surviving without water is terrible and you cannot. And the other most important thing is oxygen or the air. Have the right kind of environment in which you can breathe nicely and that is going to add value to your health. So food, water and air. If you have these three properly thought of and use health definitely is going to help, it will be better. And this slide, I'm sure you have seen this, but I'll just play one more time because this is a very important thing and reinforcement or reminding you about what to drink. Uh -huh. when to Hi, Disha. People say hmm? water is good to drink, buttermilk is good to drink, and also milk is good to drink. Hmm. So which one should we consume in a day? I'm really confused. Oh, okay. So you want to know how to drink and use all these three things. Okay. Uh, all these three things are good, Disha. You know how to consume. There is a beautiful shloka for this. Bhojanante pibe takram. That is at the end of the meals, you have to take buttermilk. Vasarante pibet payaha. At the end of the day, you have to drink milk. Nishante cha pibet vari. Nishante means at the end of the night, that is in the morning, you have to drink vari, that is water. Trebher dosho na jayate. So if you follow it like this, your doshas will be balanced in the body and you can remain disease free. So to bring the awareness about various foods, we have made several products, awareness products. And these awareness products will bring the knowledge or information to the people. And then the prescription happens. And once the prescription happens, then people will be able to take it with knowledge. We made 500 word search book and 365 nursery rhymes and 200 wall chart, the items that you definitely have to eat of different categories of foods. And we also we've made 100 food items, coloring books. You must have seen the, some of these at the India Home activities. And this is the 
nursery rhyme that I'll be playing, I encourage every one of you to see that your grandkids or kids, somebody who you know, follow these. And we have a music teacher now who is ready to teach these rhymes to all the kids. Please let Geeta ji or me or someone know in the India home so that your kid, grandkids or kids can be introduced to this music teacher to teach. Can you hear? Yeah. Mango. Let me increase the volume probably. A E N C Mango Mango. so bright golden sunshine in its bite packed with vitamins a e and c mango mango good for me mango mango oh so sweet rich in b6 a nutritious treat yellow juicy packed with e mango mango you boost glee in your palm antioxidants lie boosting health and keeping us spry fiber rich for digestion neat mango mango you're so sweet potassium packed for health's delight in every bite a wellness sight for our health you play a part mango mango your pure art also we made a puzzle with 101 food items that all of you must consume and soon that will also be given to you and the new era we are engineering longevity to live longer we are increasing the health span and to make these two things happen not only with medicines but now the 100 year old American Heart Association is coming out with a program called Foodies Medicine. They take all the health care that is available now for all the people and combine that with food and make it a better one for a healthier and longer life. Why is it so simple? Because people know that eating fat is bad because it will form atherosclerosis. And therefore, fat should not be eaten. Or egg yolk should not be eaten. But what is missing in the whole thing is our understanding. If you eat garlic or and olive oil and red wine, they have molecules which can block the fat molecules to form the plaques. This knowledge is now percolating into all sections of medical areas and it will come into the people's prescription so that if you are eating high fat, you have to have garlic, olive oil or red wine so that your plaque formation is minimized or eliminated. With this knowledge, a earlier set of suggestions made by Harvard Medical School to their patients, asking them to eat a fruit every day, have saved $50 billion in healthcare costs. And extending this to all the other vegetables, people will have very good, healthy life. We have a disease database a molecular database, as I was mentioning about the million molecules, and we have food database. All these three things will be combined. And if there is a disease or an unhealthy condition, the molecules that are responsible will be identified. They will be seen 
through the knowledge database of the human, human metabolomic database. And the correction will be happening using the food database, which also has so many molecules, 70,926 so far. It will be increasing as the food items increase. So right now the world is moving towards a molecular prescription or molecular way to prescribe foods so that people will be healthy. What will happen is all these things will be in the box like a software thing and you go and get tested by non-invasively and the prescription comes of what kind of food item that you should consume to improve your health or make it better. There are 40 food items which will give all the 40 essential nutrients to you. Essential nutrient is something that the body cannot make. Out of million molecules in the human body, human body factory is capable of making almost all the molecules except 40 molecules. These 40 molecules you have to supply through food. In addition to the food, the, in addition to these 40 molecules, there are two other things that are very important. That is water and oxygen. So if you supply these 42 or these 40 food items, you will have very good healthy ones. The list is here and soon this will be circulated to you. Please ask Gitaji and then we will provide you with these kind of lists. You know all these food products, they are nothing, none of them are any new unknown ones, but you have to eat them continuously so that the body gets whatever it requires. Now, the American Heart Association is coming out with a program. It actually started, if you remember, in October, Dr. Mitchell Elkin and his team came to present to us about food is medicine concept. Between then and now, it has developed very rapidly. In between, I met Dr. Mitchell Elkind as well, and I saw the progress is very, very good in all areas. Right now, the planning stage to develop a platform is, has happened, and the pilot teams have started, and now they are trying to do the component testing of all the food items and minimize the risk if there is anything that is going to cause as a risk. Then they will go for definitive trials in 2007, 2027. In 2027, actual prescriptions will happen. And the evaluation will happen between 2027 and 32. At the end of this, implement, implementation and dissemination will start in 2032. That will be a successful program, which is going to be food is medicine and will be covered by various plant materials. And also there is a coverage that is coming from insurance agencies as well. Unless all this work is done, insurance agencies cannot cover your prescription of food. Today, they are ready to cover your medicines, but not food. Soon, that will change and your food also will be covered. But it will take some time because they need all this work to be completed successfully. Well, there is the proof. Just this week, last week, General of American College of Cardiologists also have come out saying that food is medicine for cardiometabolic health. They want to have patients identified for the eligibility and assessment, then food-based nutrition recommendations, and then follow-up. And this is going to happen. The full framework is developed independent of American Association of American Heart Association by various scientists and this is going to be implemented as we progress. And there's a book 
if you want to read in detail by doc dr mark hyman food and this book is very good i have presented parts of this book to you before and this book is a very helping guide for individuals even before all that clinical trials and everything happen you can consume based on his advice from time to time and with that we live quite a healthy life pasye masarada sadam jive masarada sadam udye masarada sadam ruhe masarada sadam puje a hundred autumns may we live a hundred autumns may we be wakeful for a hundred autumns may we attain wisdom for a hundred autumns may we be well for a hundred autumns may we adorn a hundred autumns may the autumns be more than a hundred may we accomplish all this well the proof for such dramatic things you know that your phone your smartphone is million times more powerful than the phone that was in 1956 therefore i will believe that it will happen soon namaste Yes, thank you, thank you, Doctor Rao, for bringing up so much of information. I know you every week you keep on refreshing our memories. Uh, so many things like you taught us in this last year, whole past year, and you keep on refreshing our memory. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs>